Hello everyone, this is Juan Sarmiento and today is Friday, March the 3rd. Let's take a look at our trades first, the ones in place, and then we will consider two, well, one candidate. The ones that I was thinking about are already there, I just noticed. Let's go through our trades, Adobe, first of all, and analyze that. It looks fine. You can see that the expirations are March the 17th, way in front of us and then April the 21st so no no change there AXP let's see this uh, we can delete all that so we can take a closer look at, uh, at what we have here And the expiration is today, March the 3rd, and the stock is trading below 180, and I have already had this March 3rd. Not sure why I did it. This, this was supposed to be closed because now, perhaps because the stock was low before, I didn't think it would approach 180, but now it got really close over here and just jumped in the last few days. Fortunately, it has not exceeded 180, but we can certainly close this now, uh, just in case it goes to 180. I don't think so, but let's set, uh, buy it back for five cents. Just in case, five cents is not gonna break our budget, uh, but if it went above 180, the stock that is, it could be could be it could cause some trouble so let's just delete that we shouldn't be leaving uh, more short calls than uh, we shouldn't be selling having more short or the same definitely not more long uh, short calls than long calls let alone puts, it's the same thing. I guess you could leave one short put, it's not be a big thing, but the calls definitely not, okay? So in this case, I had sold the calls. Let's move on to BP. And in case of BP, all you need to look is at the expirations, that's March 31st, no change there, okay? We have plenty of time before expiration and then we can decide whether we want to close that position or not. Let's go to CRM. In the case of CRM, those are expiring next week, okay? And the stock jumped dramatically after earnings. And that's a good thing, I suppose. This is a weekly chart, let's put a daily chart. So in this case, I want to do a rollover, okay? And we're going to go from March 10, which is next week, to April 10. Okay, so let's do the rollover first, analyze rolling. Oh, actually what we can do is do the call side and the put side we'll do next week. It might go down, who knows? And then we do the rollover of the put or just sell additional put by expiration. So let's analyze rolling. Okay, and we're gonna go to April the 6th, April the 14th. Okay, that's good. Confirm and send. And then next week we'll do the put side because it's so far away from the put, it wouldn't make sense to just simply do a rollover. If the stock were, were, were to collapse, that's a different story, okay? Uh, also, you can definitely do a roll up of the call. See, see, 175 here? Well, I'm gonna do a roll up to 185. And the, for the calls, I have one more outstanding call. What I mean by that? Well, we have three longs, two short calls, okay? so. I have an outstanding call, I'm going to do a roll up of that. Analyze rolling, and I'm going to do just one of them. I'm buying, I'm selling the May 23rd 150 call, and I'm going to buy a higher strike price. In this case, 
Well, something like 185, which is the current strike price, the current um, in the money or at the money strike price. And that gives me $2,617 off of that that I could use for buying other stocks, other trades. Ah, but we have this 175. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Analyze rolling. Or, better yet, we can just close that, couldn't we? And, yeah, and then we only end up with a one, 185 call. That's it. It's the only, and that would neutralize my, my trade. We'll wait a little while until those get filled. Let's go to PA. Oh, okay, that was a fill. We'll go back to those. Uh, let's go to PA and W. Okay, we are here, 24th of March, plenty of time for that to work. Okay, so no change there. It's a fairly recent trade. Let's go to SDX. In SDX, I have this March call and that's expiring, okay? I don't need to do anything, but I'm gonna close it just. It's gonna cost me one penny, no big deal. I would just let it go, you know, only a few hours away from closing. But uh, if you are scared that it could go higher, then close it. Let's go to TSM. Obviously, this. Um, when I did this, sell two calls, uh, that was when the stock was much lower, but it has been uh, reversing right now, okay? So, it must have been. I'm not, not sure exactly when I did that, but in any case, uh, don't, don't do it unless you're a positive that the stock will not close above 70. And yeah, we are fairly far away from it. But now we, when we close that, this is what the trade will look like. Right now it looks like this. Okay. All right, let's move on to TSM. And here we have March 17, plenty of time for that to work. So no need to change anything. Unless, of course, the stock had moved strongly in either direction and then you're taking money away. Yeah, or closing the trade. You can still close the trade. Okay. The only trade that I was going to consider was on MOS, but I think it's not going to work either. Volatility is dropping. Let's see. Uh, I have the trade here. Give me just a second here so that I can put this chart next to the trade and MOS is right here. And this is my proposed trade. Okay, so what are we going to look at? We're going to look if this stock is tradable in my, from my perspective. Okay, so first thing is the trade I'm proposing is at the strike price of 55. This stock is trading at 56 and a bit almost 57 okay so uh, what is it gonna cost me fourteen dollars and eighty one cents for each of each lot okay so I'm gonna come over here in this and enter the price fourteen point eighty one and this number must not be more than ten percent of my account in this case, 14%, well, it's way low. Uh, okay, so my account is 97,000, so I'm gonna change this. The number could be, let's say, five. Let's see how that turns. Yeah, I can increase it. Seven is too much, so we're gonna stick with six. Six slots, that means we have, we're gonna sell six calls and six puts and buy 12 pots uh, calls and 12 puts. The strike price 
this is just for detail 55 just that I can remember but we have it in front of us June is for the sh long and March for the uh, shorts okay so I'm gonna put the date here is 3 31st 23 and for the long is longs is 16 June 23 there you have it that's the date just to remind myself then we look at the earnings earnings came here just a few days back and you can see that it says um, the actual is 1.52 and the estimate 2.07 2.078 and the short is that mean the uh, and the actual is 1.52 and that's a no-no okay uh, you know what I have my keyboard in Spanish let's change that to 2.078 and 1.52 and that is negative so that's a do not trade okay so that's a strike against this trade so that's a negative then we go for the volatility it still is moving strongly so perhaps the reason why it's moving strongly have nothing to do with earnings but to earnings coming up okay so you would have to go to the news and find out what did they say if it was extremely positive never mind what the um, banks and the trading companies say or the brokerage firms look at what the company is saying okay They reported better than expected quarter fourth quarter sales. Okay, so there is a hidden number here because it says the estimate was much higher than the actual. But it may be that um, the earnings had some corrective uh, thing, you know, some charges that are not that are not really relevant. So you need to go through this carefully and see if they really beat the expectations or not. It says the earnings per share uh, adjusted, it was 74, they were expecting 1.52. No, that's the actual. Okay, so please read before you trade that. I'm going to skip it because in the interest of time because I know that I'm not, I'm not going to trade this. But let's go to the uh, trade tab. Let's copy our trade, copy that, and you can paste it here, or you can copy it from here and paste it in the spreadsheet, and then analyze that. Okay, if you wonder how I come up with this, make sure you visit other, uh, other um, videos of mine. I will put one relevant to this. And here you see that the volatility of the June 55 calls is 44. That's just too high. That in itself kills the trade. Okay, so I'm not going to go any further than that. But you would enter those numbers here in the spreadsheet. If you want the spreadsheet, ask for it and I will post it. Uh, then the liquidity. The liquidity is easy. All you need to do is say create duplicate or create duplicate and that gives you the mid and the natural enter those two numbers here and then that's the uh, one sub minus the other in percentage basis so I, I put the mid 14.72 and the max is natural is 0.18 and that's three percent that's a do not trade it's three percent precisely or a little above three percent is okay I would trade on that but because the volatility is in the 40s that's a no-no I'm not even entering here for calculation and then the current ID percentile 
to do that, go to the trade tab and scroll down, scroll, scroll down to on the trade tab for the today's options and statistics and you see that the current IV percentile is zero and that's low enough I would say and that's good uh, but the volatility it is a factor if it is 44 or more I'm not going to trade it and I'm referring to the back month the back month being 44 is just a kill killer for the trade okay that's about it okay I wanted to show you the um, charts that I use this IV let's go to the chart here chart I use a couple of indices that need not much change let me remove this which is the Ichimoku cloud that is as stated here in the studies okay say studied and it studies you'd see that I have this IVSV 52.2 okay let's see if I click here it shows you what I have here all right this is a formula you can create a strategy here and in this case I call it IVSV correct IVSV1 I'm going to show it to you IV SV1 right here okay so double click on it and here oh that's not it it's just hmm, something's not quite working edit that's what I wanted to do and this is the formula that I use okay you can copy it as this and I'm gonna copy it and put it at the bottom of this at the bottom of the, the doc the comments below so you can copy it and paste it and then save it as a uh, uh, study for you to use okay I'm gonna save that that's all for today so you can use that to look at the volatility if it's red don't even try it if it's yellow perhaps not if it's green it's a go okay that's all for today thank you very much for joining me see you next time bye bye